All right, so our last example from the Your Turn from Section 12.1 and 12.2 material, we are going to multiply by the reciprocal here. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 9 times x plus 2, factoring this first one, and as x times 4x minus 3, because nothing's going to change in there, right? I just copy this down, and that's factored to that, and that one's factored to that. And then times, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite the denominator into the numerator. So 4x squared minus 11x, and then plus 6. And then down here, x squared plus 4x plus 4. And those factored that way. Now I'm going to change color of pins because I'm going to factor these so I don't have to keep rewriting these. So this, I notice, is a perfect square trinomial, right? Perfect square there is 2, perfect uh, square there, so that's x. x times 2 times 2 is 4, so this is going to factor as x plus 2 quantity squared. And so I'm going to cross this one out because now I factor that. Now here, I'm looking at the factors of 4 times 6. And I'm going to use this as a jumping off place, okay? 4 times 6, which is 24. And 24's factors, um, which it's not letting me write those, are 1 and 24, and 2 and 12, and 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. And with those factors, I'm looking for those that sum to 11. Well, that would be an 8 and a 3. Now, I'm not going to use the grouping strategy. I'm going to use that to jump off. So I need to create, with the factors of 4, 1 and 4, or 2 and 2. And 6's factors, 1 and 6, and 2 and 3, I need to create an 8 and a 3. Well, the only way I'm going to create an 8 and a 3 with these factors of 6 would be with, and 4 would be with the 2 and 3 here. So I'm going to get ready for factors here by putting in x's. And I'm definitely putting a 3 in here and definitely putting a 2 in here. So I need a 1 times the 3, the outside, to be a 3. And if I put the 4 and the 1 in for the factors here, and here, that's what I get. Outside um, makes 3 times 1, and inside makes 2 times 4. 8 plus 3 is indeed 11. They both be, need to be negative. And you'll notice that I still have 1 times 4, which is 4x squared, right? 2 times 3, which is 6. You have to make sure those work. And so now that's factored. And now what I need to do is I need to cancel. So I'm going to look for canceling factors. Well, that one cancels with that one. And one of those goes with one of those. And then x minus 2, no, no x minus 2, no 9s. So now I'm ready to rewrite. So I'm going to rewrite this as 9 times x minus 2 over x times x plus 2. Now, a lot of times, basic algebra books will make you multiply these back out. So they'll look like 9 times x would be 9x minus 9 times 2, which is 18, over x times x, which is x squared, plus x times 2, which is 2x. Um, I'm usually good with just leaving it here factored, because usually that's where we'll be going from that at that point, is just from a factored standpoint. But usually basic algebra books are wanting you to practice your multiplication skills, so they'll remultiply them out. So just pay attention to the patterns that are available to you. Now, we're going to skip ahead to some section 12.3 stuff. Um, but before we start going over that, we have to do a little bit of review. So we're going to just talk about really briefly how to find the least common denominators again. So remember that started with prime factorization, and you can start from basically anywhere you want to and do the prime factors of a number, right? So if I have two, uh, 3 times 8, then 8 breaking down 2 times 4, and 4 breaking down 2 times 2, 24 is equal, therefore, to 2 cubed times 3. And then I break 18 down the same way, 3 times 6, which is 2 times 3. And we see the primes here, and so this is 2 times 3 squared. And then to find the least common denominator, I'm going to take my unique factors. So I see 2's and 3's up there, so I write the 2's and the 3's down. And then I'm going to take the highest.